conference, thank you. And uh, thank you for the, the warm introduction. It's my first time speaking to you. So uh, I'm proud to be here representing Richmond in the magnificent county of North Yorkshire. Now, as Chief Secretary to the Treasury, it's my job to watch the pennies. And as our fantastic Chancellor likes to say, when you need someone to be thrifty with the nation's cash, who better to call on than an adopted Yorkshireman? <laughs> and, uh, and speaking of uh, Yorkshiremen, as you heard, uh, I am privileged to be William Hague's successor. As you can imagine, it's not always easy following in William's uh, great footsteps. Uh, a local farmer once compared us and told me, lad, you've got twice the hair and half the brains. <laughs> but, uh, but conference, you don't even need half a brain to know that labor spending plans simply don't add up. But that's not the worst of it. They do something even more damaging. Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell would fundamentally destroy the free enterprise economy that pays for our nurses, our teachers, our armed forces. Take just one example. Their plan to confiscate 10% of the value of all successful companies. Imagine what would happen. Investment would cease. Jobs would disappear. Pension savings would be hammered. This 300 billion pound raid would be the largest expropriation of assets ever seen in a Western democracy. Now, I've spent my career in business, investing in companies big and small. I have pored over Labour's plans in detail, and I can tell you, everybody would end up paying the price. But I should be careful. Ask their deputy leader, Tom Watson, what Labour do to you if you disagree with them? They don't debate you, they try and abolish you. And as Conservatives, we believe you can't tax your way to success. We believe in supporting free enterprise, ambition, entrepreneurship. That's the way you pay for excellent public services. Now, we should never be afraid of making the case for this. But we can't do it as dry accountants, speaking only to people's heads. Instead, we must be conservatives with heart, whose mission is to lift people out of poverty and ensure their families can count on the public services they need. Because when Labour's economy tanks, their borrowing bills rise and the jobs dry up, it's the vulnerable in our society who will suffer the most. Every Labour government leaves office with unemployment higher than when it started. Today, record numbers of people are in work, wages are rising at 4%, putting more money in people's pockets. Conference, I know and you know which is the real party of the worker, the Conservative Party. Now, when it comes to excellent public services, this government is investing in the people's priorities. 20,000 more police officers, well-funded schools, the front line of the NHS. But as Chief Secretary, I am interested in results. Not just what we put in public services, but what we get out of them too. As Conservatives, we must never measure our success by how much we spend, but by how many lives we transform. As the son of a GP and chemist, I grew up working in their surgery and pharmacy, seeing firsthand how the NHS can transform people's lives at their moment of need. And when it comes to our schools, we all in this room should be extremely proud that reading standards are now the best in a generation why? Because we didn't listen to Labour or the unions, but instead we pioneered a phonics revolution in our classrooms. Those reforms benefited disadvantaged children the most and are a perfect demonstration of our moral mission 
as conservatives. A mission to help every person in our society succeed. Every person. For I also stand here proudly as a Northern MP, as a rural MP, proud that this party believes all parts of our nation deserve to share in our prosperity. So we will level up across Britain with a new wave of infrastructure investment in road and rail, in innovation, in full fibre broadband. Conference, we are the party of opportunity for all. So whether you grow up in Southampton or live in Yorkshire, work in the city or farm in the Dales, we will be on your side and ensure that every part of our great country prospers together. And conference, I know Brexit can help deliver that prosperity. Like many of you, I voted to leave the EU. Like you, I'm a bit tired of being told that somehow we didn't know what we were voting for. This was a vote about seizing our future as a global, dynamic, independent Britain. We can take control of immigration and also become an even greater beacon for the world's most talented people. We can design a trade policy that cuts prices in our shops and links us to the fastest growing parts of the global economy. And we can use economic innovations like free ports to create thousands of new jobs and accelerate our growth. But of course, making such a significant change comes with challenges. And we should acknowledge that. But we should also be clear that we will make the right decisions for the long term and we must get Brexit done. If we don't, if we don't, the values which once attracted my parents to this country as immigrants, respect for democracy, fair play, liberty, are all at stake. So now is the time to be bold, to seize opportunities at home and abroad, to energize our politics with passion and imagination. If we take the right approach now, Britain after Brexit can be a place of hope and idealism, compassion and social justice, optimism and opportunity. So conference, let's have pride in what we conservatives have achieved. Let's be confident about our future and together let's deliver for Britain. <laughs>